Now, I was going to make this video about how Sam Harris is a racist. Now, that may sound funny. Or maybe that sounds pretty serious. Yeah, I think that's the problem. It's probably people would take that pretty seriously. And they say, well, that's kind of serious. Um, well, we're all kind of racist. And I wanted to point out some specifically um, how Sam Harris was avoiding talking about the race relationships that we have in this country and just um, how serious that is. And I, I will come back to that, I think, at some point and explain that. But at this moment, I'm thinking about something that I talked about yesterday with my stepmother, and that's the idea of needs versus wants. An issue I think we're having, and it causes problems of dialogue primarily, is the idea of saying we need something when what we really want to be saying is we want something. Like for example, I don't need Sam Harris to listen to me, I want Sam Harris to listen to me. And taking ownership is the difference there. When we say we need something, we're not taking own ownership. We're saying, well, this is fundamental. I need it. There's, there's, there's no explanation. You know, it has to happen. There's, it's a dependency. Needs are dependent, and they are dependent actually on wants. Notice how that picture is kind of crooked in the background. Doesn't that bother you? Yeah, it bothers me too. It sucks, but you're gonna have to live with it. Anyways, so you need that picture to be straightened. No, you want that picture to be straightened. Um, we often tell people you need to do X. When what we, if we're taking ownership, and, and this is about ownership ultimately. But if we're taking ownership of the issue, we would say, for me to, or uh, okay, so you have to think about it a little, little, little bit. I feel that having that picture in the background is really distracting to me. Okay. That is a need, that is a want, but we can say it has a need to correct that feeling in me, if you were to straighten that picture, I would feel better. Right? Okay. So the need is connected to the want of wanting to feel better about this image that you're looking at. Um, I hope that makes sense because I think it's actually an important concept. And I actually asked my stepmother to um, try to work it out. It, you know, use it to say, what are my wants in this situation? And I pointed out to her that when we talk to someone, we want something. Okay. And the question you can ask yourself is, well, what do I want to accomplish in this conversation? So for me, in this conversation, what do I want to accomplish? I want to accomplish your understanding of the difference between needs and wants. I want you to understand my idea. I don't need you to understand my idea. It's what I want. And we can look at a lot of things um, where we're forcing people to do things based on the ethical principle of you have to do this. No one has to do anything. You know, they can die. I mean, the bottom line is the universe owes us nothing. So, and this comes about with Sam Harris's moral landscape. And I really had to think really long and hard because he actually had a moral landscape challenge. And so I've been thinking about that and it's been winding away in my head all this time. And I've been, what are the core essential principles of ethics and one of the things that comes up in that conversation is this idea of ought you ought to do something mm, you want me to do something or I want to do something but there's no ought to do something now there isn't now ought is really a question of this is the best way of doing this and that's what really is meant in ethics in terms of, okay, if we want a civil society, we ought to have laws. 
Okay. But what I'm trying to do is get you to see the want behind the ought. You really can't have an ought without a want. Um, so ought is a dependent variable. Okay. It's not a primary variable. It is not a universal um, pending variable. There's an interesting book, um, physics book, called The Mathematical Un Universe. I'm doing this off the cuff, so I, I don't have it prepared. It just sort of came up in this conversation right now. But the point he was making in the book, that there aren't a lot of fundamental variables to the universe, and he goes down and he shows you, there's only, like, I don't know, maybe a handful of actual numbers that are essential to describing the universe. And ought is not one of them, I assure you of that. Um, so what are the dependent variables? And where, why would we expect to find a um, universal ethic? You know, And people have sort of struggled with that idea. And part of the problem with that idea is that they've been struggling with it from the standpoint of command theory. And that's what I say all ethics is based on what I call a command theory of ethics. And we, we screw up because we don't realize that everything isn't a command. You know, thou, um, how do we normally say it? Thou shall not kill, thou shall not steal. Um, that's a command format. You know, it's telling you what to do. It doesn't ask you what you want to do. It asks you what you should do, right? So we think ethics has to be this command-based ethic. But I, I think that's actually damaging. And, and one of the things I think it hurts is dialogue and conversation. And so, so we can look in a broad sense over the, our conversations about racism, sexism, um, any issue that we may have in a social environment and we can realize that a part of the problem is people have a command um, sense of what should happen. Well, that's wrong. Well, why is it wrong? Well, because it says so here, or because it, it violates the golden rule. Now, if you haven't heard it, the golden rule is flawed, and it's flawed f in a very interesting way. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What's the assumption? The assumption is that other people want the same thing as you, which isn't true. Some people want vanilla ice cream. Some people want chocolate ice cream. Now, what I have long said is that I think ethics is not separate from our preferences. They're a part of our preferences. We prefer a civil society. We don't need a civil society. There's no universal law that says we have to have a civil society. Thus, we need to, if, okay, not we need, if we want to have it, we need to create it. So there is a need, and, and we can look at it this, my car example. I often use a car example to explain this. If you want a car, you need tires, an engine, you know, a body, somewhere to sit, maybe some brakes, maybe a steering wheel. Okay, so the want is the car, the needs are what constitutes a car. Okay, so that's why I get frustrated with Sam Harris because I don't think he gets that idea, the, the difference between wants and needs. Now, I don't know that because he's never addressed me personally and it's very hard to get in contact with people that think you're an idiot. So, you know, that's just the way it is. So if anyone knows him, it would be nice to get feedback on this, but I'll never get feedback. Now, Michael Shermer would be the same one. I would address the same question to. So I will let him know I made this video for him and Sam. Because I think it's a very fundamental question. I think we can resolve our... It's more... Here's the thing. We're not good negotiators when we come from a position of demands. And when we say, you need to do this, that is a demand. Um, when we say, I want this because I want a civil society, then you're coming from a position of negotiation. And that's really where we need to be working towards, is a position of negotiation. So let's deal with the need and want issue. If you have ideas about needs and wants, that's why I made this video. I finally decided to try to put it together. 
decided to do it off the cuff. I was getting very frustrated with the other video I was doing because it was too geeky. Um, and I didn't want to be dishonest and I felt there was a part of dishonesty and I really need to talk about this needs and want issue. And so here it is, a 10 minute long rant, but it basically says what I wanted to say. So thanks for watching. Oh, <laughs>